Hey guys, welcome back. So last time we created our email content and actually included a link with the correct code inside of it, like this, and it takes us to this page, but since we don't have this page created yet, we see this error message. So let's go ahead and create this reset password page. So what I'm gonna do is close these tabs down, uh, and I'm gonna keep this open, and uh, let's go back to our text editor now. So we need to create a new file, and the file is gonna be called resetpassword.php, because this is what we added in the link. So I'm gonna copy that name, I'm gonna create a new file, and I'm gonna save it as uh, resetpassword. PHP. And this page won't do anything overly complicated, just some queries and just a, a form as well. So I've opened my PHP block and the very first thing we're going to do is include the config file. So we can just say include and then config.php because we will be using uh, database commands in this. So we need our connection to the database which is in this config file of course. The next thing we're going to do is say if and then not is set like this and then dollar sign underscore get inside there we're going to put a code and the reason we're using code in there is because in this request reset we called the parameter code so whatever you've named it here make sure that goes inside the square brackets so we're saying if this parameter in the url is not set that means they haven't passed in a code variable in the parameter like this that means this part isn't there then all we're going to do is just say exit and then can't find page. Maybe you want to put something else in there, like this link is broken or something. It's entirely up to you, but I'm just going to write can't find page. So right away, if I uh, refresh this page, you won't see anything yet. But if I get rid of this code part, you should see uh, that can't find page. All right. All right. So underneath that if statement, if we get to this point, we know that we definitely do have a code. So I'm going to copy this get variable. And then all I'm going to do is just say, code equals um, and then pass that in there get rid of that uh, minus sign we don't need that so code equals this part here so that just means we definitely do have the code right now so this code variable will definitely contain the code value passed in from the um, from the link okay the next thing we'll do is take this code and make sure that there is a row in the uh, reset passwords table this one here so what we're going to do is take this code and see if there's a row in the table which matches that code okay so it's real simple again underneath that we're going to say get email query because we are going to get the email address from this and we'll just say equals mysqli underscore query passing our connection variable and then the query itself is going to be select email from reset passwords this is our table and say where code equals and inside there just put code like that all right and that should be good this should hopefully uh, get the email now but underneath that, we'll just do a check and we'll say if mysqli underscore num underscore rows and then pass in this uh, get email query variable equals equals zero. So if there are no rows found, so that it means it didn't find anything with the, with this code, we can just also uh, repeat this error message. We'll say exit uh, and then can't find page. OK, so if we do get to here, we know it did find a row and we should be good to go. So let's test it out now. What I'm going to do is refresh the page and we should see nothing at the moment because we do have this code in there. So again, we see nothing. But if I change this code and put something else on the end, like a different number, there's nothing in the database with this number. So we see can't find page. So we know it works. So I'll go back to how it is when, it's, uh, when we have a good code and we see no uh, error message. So the last thing to do then is to create the form they can use to actually update their password. So let's go back to here and it's a real simple form. Underneath uh, this PHP block, we're going to say form. And we're going to have no action on the form because it's going through the same page. But then we will say uh, method equals and then post. Then we'll also do an input as well. So input and the type is going to be password because we want this to have the, uh, the hidden characters when you type into it. And we'll just say name equals password as well. And then the placeholder can be uh, new password. All right. So there's our input field. We just need to create our button now, but before we do that, we'll just do a line break and then underneath that, we'll create the button. So I'll say input type equals submit and name can just be uh, submit like that. And the value, of course, is the text that will be displayed on the button and we'll just say update password. Oh, password like that. All right, give it a save. And we should see a form on the page now, which we do, great. So now that we have the form, we need to actually do something when it's submitted because at the moment when they type into it and they press submit or press update, I should say, nothing happens. So we need to actually handle that submission. So at the bottom of this PHP block, we're going to say if and then is set inside there. We're going to say dollar sign underscore post square brackets and then password like this and then put your curly brace on. 
we can say uh, PW for password equals dollar sign underscore post in square brackets we're going to put password because that's the name we've used right here so whatever name you've put in there put that inside the square brackets so this should get the value from the password field now and then we're going to encrypt it so PW equals and now I'll just use MD5 for the encryption and put PW in there so MD5 of course isn't the most secure of encryption anymore but to keep it simple, I'm just going to use MD5 here. This is just for demonstration purposes. So you, of course, probably have something set up already, and you would replace this encryption with whatever you're doing. Maybe you're using SHA-512 or something like that, but uh, this is just where you would encrypt your password. And underneath that, we're going to say uh, row equals MySQLI underscore fetch underscore array. Okay, and we're going to get the data from uh, this get email query over the top there. Okay, because remember at the top we selected the email from this uh, table and down here is where we're going to get it. So we can just say email equals row square brackets and we're going to email column like that and that's the one we selected right here. Okay, we're nearly there. All we have to do now is an update query. So we can just say query equals mysqli underscore query. Pass in the connection variable and the query itself is just going to update the password. So we'll say update users set Password equals, and in single quotes, just put the PW variable, where email equals, in double quotes, just put the email uh, value. Okay, so it's updating the password, setting it to this, uh, where email equals wherever that email was. So that should update the password, and then what we need to do is delete that request from the table. So we're going to delete the uh, row from this table. So we can say if, and then uh, query. So we're saying if this query command executes successfully, because remember this will return false if it doesn't execute successfully. So let's just uh, execute another query. We'll say query equals mysqli underscore query. Put your connection variable in there. And the command is just going to be delete from reset passwords where code equals code. All right, so this should delete that, uh, that code row from that table. And then the very last thing to do is just exit with uh, some string and we'll say password updated. All right, and what I'll do is I'll uh, do an else block underneath that and I'll put another exit in there and this will just say um, something went wrong. That means uh, this query failed for some reason, okay? Give it a save and that's it. We should be good now. So what I'm going to do first is delete all of these rows from the table because these we don't need these anymore. So I'm deleting that just so it's empty for us to see. Makes it a little bit easier for us. Okay, so now this is empty. We do have this users table, of course, with the password set to that. This will hopefully be updated in a second. So I'll refresh this so we get some clean code. And I just realized this won't work actually because we just deleted the row from the table. So I just refreshed it, but because there's no row in the table with this code anymore, it's shown this, uh, this can't find page error. So we actually do need to um, get another email. So what I'll do is go back to here and I'll go back to index page, click forgot password and type in my email address, courses at reesekinney.com. Press reset email. And we see it sent us an email. So hopefully if I refresh my inbox, we see our email. Great. Click on that. I'll click on the link that it gives us and then we can go ahead and update our password. I'll set it to something. I'll type in Password is my new password. It's a great one, I know. Uh, and we see password updated. Let's go and check the table. So the users table, password value should be updated. This is it before I've uh, refreshed the page. So remember this. I'm going to click on the user table and refresh it. And now we see an actual uh, password in there. We've updated it. Great. And in the reset passwords table, you should see nothing because it should have uh, deleted the uh, row from here when, it, when we updated the password. So that's essentially it. A real simple way that users can request a password reset and you can actually allow them to do so. Of course, I haven't styled anything in this course, so I've done real basic forms, and you would probably update this, maybe have your logo, or maybe your header of your site on here, but I'll leave the styling up to you. This tutorial is more about the functionality rather than getting a nicely styled uh, form in there. So I hope this helped, and if you have any questions at all, just let me know. Wish all the hashtags, likes and tweets were fine. Yeah, have an